Okay, so I just want to show you a couple of things really quickly. I feel like crap and I'm tired and I want to go take a nap, but this is bugging me. So I want to go ahead and do it. This is my velvet wig grip. Um, it's a Milano grip. That's kind of old, but it's still great. All right. So the thing I love about this is it has a little spot for your part, depending on where you put your part. If you put it in the middle, it does um, fit nicely around your ears. Um, but as you can see, it still goes in a little bit. Now, some people wear their wig grips up here because there's that lace there. I don't do that. Um, I wear mine like hairband, um, like space, like right there. And then I just snap it on and boom, tighten it up. There I go. If you have a wig grip that is not, um, doesn't have the lace here, then you have to make sure you feel it because when you feel backwards, you want it to feel rough. When you feel forward, you want it to feel smooth. If you feel smooth going backwards, it's it's on wrong. Um, and that'll make your wig slip. So I've just got this right back here and my occipital bone right underneath it. Um, and then sometimes these get a little too close to my ears. Some people do trim them, but I'm gonna just adjust that just a little tiny bit so that my ears don't stick out more than my ears stick out. Okay. Um, when I put on my wig, I give it a good shake. And um, even if I'm planning to brush it, and then I take the wig from the ear tabs. I hold usually the ear just a little bit north of the ear tabs. Um, and I put the lace on my forehead right above my eyes. And then I figure out kind of like feeling where the ear tabs are, where is sort of like centered because you want the ear tabs to show up somewhere near your ears. And then I take the back of this and I pull it down until it latches underneath my wig grip. Now here I have these two tabs and I wanna get them just right. Um, and once I've got them just right, now you don't wanna be yanking on the lace. You wanna use the part here that has some sturdiness to it. Usually it's got some velvet on it. And I'm just gonna go get my ear tabs here. You can actually bend them in a little bit. I like to give them just a little tiny bend so that they hold on in a little space that I have there. Um, I don't know, works for me. And then also the other thing that's really great about that is I can put my glasses over it, but I can put my mask if I'm wearing a mask, um, you know, for health reasons, um, I can put my mask on and put it underneath my ear tabs. Okay, so this is just, I didn't do anything to her, just to give her a shake. I just feel like I'm done. I'm tired, so maybe I'm done. Um, but if I want to give her a little comb, I'm going to comb her just gently, right? And I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. Don't start and do this because you'll pull on the fibers. I also like to give a little mist of water, my favorite little mister, my mister, mister. a little bit of that all over the place and I'm going to get my hands up in here get her all right like her you know what's really funny just make sure that my little widow's peaky thing isn't showing it's just down enough um everything's in the right place there you go and then I'm going to do this funny thing is when I started all about that fringe and when I started wearing wigs I but I needed to have bangs on everything because my whole life I had bangs. Um, and you feel like I have my dad's forehead. And so I kind of like didn't feel like that was very feminine to not have bangs. Plus I had bangs like my whole life. So it was like, what's going on? I like the little kick up in the back of Tarani. You can style her down if you want to, but I kind of like that. Um, if you're gonna tuck behind your ears, I usually press a little bit there just to get the wig grip and the ear tab to kind of flatten there. And then I'm, you know, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. That's cute, right? Has a good hairline. It's positioned well. I always like 
figure out where your hairline is. Um, my hair is buzzed, but I don't wear it back behind that. Um, it feels really good. My wig grip sort of runs here. So it's it's almost like where you would wear a hairband, if that makes some sense. Um, so maybe that'll be helpful if you're trying to figure out like, you know, where to put things. Um, she's not going anywhere. I do understand that some of you have a problem because you don't have as big of an occipital bone. I don't think mine is that big, but you don't have a lot for it to hang on to. I find that if I put the wig grip there, even if it doesn't have a ton to hold on to, it's still a grip. And um, if I put, here, I'll show you on another wig. If I put the nape, this part of the nape, um, if I take it and I pull it down over that wig grip like this, it hangs on to it. Um, and so I don't use any glue. I don't use any product. I have plenty of product that I bought because at the beginning I thought I needed to buy everything. So I have all the things and yeah, don't necessarily use them. Um, I usually start my videos with, hi, I'm Karen. Welcome or welcome back to All About That Fringe. So I guess I should include that here, even though this is just a little mini video. Um, while I'm here and um, showing you how I wear my wig grip, because a few of you have asked, um, I guess I could also tell you about the white elephant carousel game. If you are a member of All About That Fringe and Friends, which is a private Facebook group, it's very small and you need to be sponsored to get in it. The reason for that is because we want people in the group that we know we can trust. Um, and so you have to know someone in the group and that person has to basically say, I vouch for them. I know that if they buy something, there's not going to be a problem with their payment. If they sell you something, there's not going to be a problem with the product that they send you within reason, obviously. So a lot of times what happens is there are only, you know, maybe a couple of people that you trust that much. Um, and that's okay. Our group is small. We want to keep it small. Um, and, and if you aren't in it and you've been watching all about that fringe videos and you'd like to be part of it, um, you can go ahead and go to our Facebook page, our main Facebook page, um, which is www.facebook.com forward slash all about that fringe. Um, and I usually post that on most of our videos too. So you can just click on that and get there. So if you do that, um, you can send me a message. Um, that PM doesn't, I don't know, it's it's meta. So it's a little temperamental. I may or may not get a notification. Um, another way you can get in touch with me is on Instagram. And that's at all about that French. And um, you can just send me a DM. Um, and, you know, if you want to talk to me about the carousel, that's great. If you want to talk to me about the group or the wig grip or anything else, that's great too. Um, if you want to be creepy, um, pretend that you are a military doctor or some other BS, um, please move along because I will delete your message and block you. Um, all right. If you hear a weird sound, that's my dog snoring in the background. And that is my cue um, to hurry it up. So, um, about the carousel, if you're a member of the private group, um, you probably see me posting about it and there are, oh no, maybe good 20 people who are participating. And what happens is you choose a wig that maybe you aren't wearing anymore. This isn't one of them, but let's just say that this was, um, you need to make sure that you take pictures, um, preferably one on you, um, and then on some sort of a stand or a foam head or um, mannequin or something like that. And um, you know, make sure you get a forward one, a side one, a back one. It doesn't have to be both sides, but it's nice. And then what's really important is to get to see what this hairline looks like. So you want to get the lace and you want to get the part. And then you want to turn it inside out. And you want to get a picture of it going this way so that you can see just like that. Perfect, okay? And then I like to have another picture that shows it like this, so that you can see whether or not there's an extended nape. You can see the wefting. You can see if it's a hand-tied cap or not. You can see 
that there's still, you know, lace front, how far down the lace front goes. You can see all of that in one nice little picture. And then you can also um, just try and make sure you get it in some natural lighting because this is going to look different. If I bring this in my bathroom, it's going to look beige. Um, it's Silver Sun RT8. This is Sumptuous Strawberry. This is Mellow. This is Tarani. Uh, Mellow Aesthetica. Tarani is Beltress. Um, let's see. The carousel, once you commit a wig to the carousel, it belongs to the carousel. Consider it sold, consider it done. Gone. You put a wig in the carousel with the intention of being able to take a wig out of the carousel. Once you put that in, you basically get your ticket and your entry into the carousel gives you a rank order based on the number of people waiting in line that week to get their wig. Now, some people pass the week prior and they get bumped ahead and they get bumped up higher priority the following week. Some people have been diligent about sending me things as soon as one carousel closes, another one comes and then I've got that right away. And that's awesome. Um, anyway, um, it is it works like a Yankee swap, except there's no stealing from each other. Um, and so you put the wig in and you get a number, and it's not a blind pick. You actually get to see what the wigs look like. I make a little PowerPoint each week with the pictures that you send me. I put them together in a nice little array, and I gather some information from you. So I need to know what the wig is, the name, the brand, the color, um, you know, the, the style, everything about it. I need to know its history. Are you the first owner? Did you buy it new? Did you buy it from someone else? What do you know about it? I need to know how much you've worn it. Hopefully not very much because we're trying to do this with really gently used or unused wigs if we can. Um, but if you've used something a decent amount and it's still in really, really, really good shape, there's no reason not to consider putting it into the carousel if you think someone else might love her. Um, but please don't put things in that need to be rehabbed or things like that. There are plenty of other places I can direct you to do that. Um, so anyway, um, better if they're, you know, mono part lace front. Um, some people have been putting in some hand tied. Some people have been putting in full monos. Um, we're trying to kind of look at what's going on with basic caps, because if you put in a basic cap and you take monos all the time, I wind up being the one who puts in a bunch of wigs and then winds up taking your basic caps as my choices, even though they're not really my choices, just so that I can get them out of the carousel um, if nobody's picking them. So if you're going to put in a basic, sometimes people have some really great basics, ones that are in high demand, ones that are kind of like people like them a lot. And if that's the case, then great. Um, also, they might be in really awesome condition. So um, let's just talk about it. And it might be that your basic cap gets you less credit toward a new um, or replacement wig. And it might be that if you're putting a couple things in the carousel in any given week, that it kind of balances itself out. Maybe you put in, you know, one exquisite wig and one sort of, you know, more basic affordable wig. No Amazon wigs, no, no fashion wigs, no cheapy kind of stuff. This is just the good stuff. Um, and it's a way to get the stuff that we're not using out of our closets, maybe pare things down without entering the sale market um, and and to try things. And for the cost of, you know, washing it, um, make sure you let me know any product that has ever been used and then what you're going to use to wash it um, so that the recipient knows about allergens and things like that. Um the other thing um, is that it's just for the cost of mailing. So we're mailing in bubble mailers. Usually what I do is I take the box, the tissue that comes in the box, and I wrap the wig in that tissue. And, and I put that wrapped wig into a Ziploc bag, and then that goes into the bubble mailer. I get my bubble mailers from the United States Postal Service. They deliver me a pack of 10 for free. Um, as many packs, I think you can get a couple of packs. They'll send them to you. Don't charge you. USPS.com. Um, and then I just go on to that same website. I do click and ship. I set up my shipping. They pick it up here on the next day. I order a pickup um, during my regular mail pickup. 
and they key it in and away it goes. Um, and I do two day priority mail just because I can do that from home. Um, if it's easy for you or close for you to go to a post office, have at it, but they should be in bubble mailers and they should be protected inside the bubble mailer. Okay. Um, if somebody really wants a box, I get it. When I started my wig journey, I wanted every box. Um, but if somebody really wants a box, then we ask that you pay for that um, extra, um, whatever it costs extra to ship above what it would have been for just a bubble mailer. So for that, you know, cost of kind of shipping it forward, you get to try some things you might not have been willing to try. Um, maybe you learn that you love some things that you didn't know you loved. And um, you get to engage in, I don't know, a little bit of, I don't know, it's not gambling, that's for sure. Um, but the sooner you, the sooner you put in, you know, um, an entry, um, the sooner you get on the spreadsheet, my little Excel spreadsheet and get, um, it's a big one, and get ranked. And then, um, yeah, I send out that message over the weekend and away we go. So you got two things today. One, how I put on my wig grip and two, how we do the white elephant carousel game. And the white elephant carousel game is only for people who are part of the private group. So if you're feeling really, really, really left out and you're like, hey, I need somebody to sponsor me, let's get to know each other and see if there's a way that we might be able to welcome you in. Um, but we're not gonna just open it up to Gen Pub. Um, what else? I think that's it for now. Um, Stay safe, be well. Thanks for being patient with me. I know I don't post as often. Um, health gets in the way. Um, but I wish you the best journey. And um, let me know if there are other things. Let me know in the comments. If there are other things you want to hear about, like little quickies, because this feels manageable um, to, to kind of maybe do a little content like this. Okay. Bye.